Good evening and thank you for joining us. Residents are rocking out at Marina Park right now as the 2024 Wake the Giant Music Festival is underway. It's the festival's fifth year and organizers wanted to celebrate the milestone with a lineup of nine great artists, including Southern Ontario Micmac singer Drives the Common Man, who took the stage earlier this afternoon. Crowds were a little smaller this afternoon, but thousands are expected to come out by the end of the night for the show's final acts, including Walk Off the Earth, Galantis, and the Arkells. Along with live music, festival goers are also treated to a live art installation, local eats, and an Indigenous craft market. The festival is part of a three-day orientation for Indigenous students who travel from remote communities to Thunder Bay to attend DFC High School. And organizer Sean Spenrath says the festival has had a huge impact on the students over the years. The overall image uh, is a little bit better up north. When you go up there, you hear a lot, uh, a lot of better things uh, stemming from this. And I think the biggest improvement that we've seen is there's been a huge confidence boost for a lot of our students that perform and partake in these events. Uh, they feel more comfortable here in Thunder Bay because we, we do put on this orientation every year for them. Wake the Giant will continue tonight with headliner the Arkells taking the stage at 10.15. Thunder Bay welcomed a new cruise ship to its port today as the Pinot Le Champagne made its inaugural visit to the Pool 6 site. The turnaround stop was one of many the French vessel will be making along the North Shore this week. City officials welcomed, welcomed Le Champlain's captain Yannick Simon to Thunder Bay this morning as the ship made a 12-hour stop at Pool 6 to board new passengers. This is the vessel's first time visiting Lake Superior since it was built in 2018 and to celebrate it will be visiting various small towns on the North Shore including Rossport and Terrace Bay. Captain Simon says he enjoyed traveling around Lake Superior and he's hoping the ship will visit Thunder Bay again next year. Big thanks to uh, everyone here in Thunder Bay. It was really nice to be here. Uh, also sailing in the, in the islands uh, of the North Shore. It's really, uh, really nice, impressive and uh, it's really a beautiful place. Really excited to have more of the turnaround business here in the city. It's great for the airport, great for hotels, great for the, uh, the food suppliers and logistics uh, companies here in the city, and uh, you know, making sure that uh, they have an exceptional experience here in the community for their passengers and crew. The ship is leaving the port tonight at 7 for Silver Islet. The ship will briefly be back in Thunder Bay on the 18th to switch crew members. In just a few hours, once the clock strikes midnight, both Air Canada and its pilots will be in a position to issue a 72-hour notice of a striker lockout. And that's left a lot of weekend plans up in the air and businesses scrambling to find other ways to move their cargo. CTV's Camille Karamali reports. The clock is ticking. If a deal between Air Canada and its pilots isn't reached by midnight tonight, then work stoppage could begin as early as Wednesday. Both the pilots' union and the airline say talks continue today, but both sides are still far apart when it comes to wages and working hours. The airline says there haven't been any flight cancellations yet, but they've already begun grounding some of their planes and stopping the transport of some cargo items. It's not just the tens of thousands of travelers that may have to put their travel plans on hold, but businesses would also take a financial toll, with the potential stoppage estimated to cost the economy roughly $90 million per day. And that includes things like vaccines and medical supplies, uh, agriculture, perishable food products. And so a disruption in that service, even a very short one, could, could be devastating us. There's no other means of transport that can really meet those stringent timelines for delivery. Air Canada says if an agreement isn't reached by midnight tonight, it will gradually start cancelling flights over a three-day period. But after that, even if they do come to an agreement with the pilots' union, it could take weeks for the flights to return to their normal schedule. Kamel Koromali, CTV News, Toronto. Back to the region now where the emergency department in Rainy River will stay open at least until the end of November. That's the latest update from the hospital, which is dealing with the imminent departure of all three doctors still working there. The Rainy River Physician Group announced three weeks ago that they'll be pulling out of the hospital at the end of September. Riverside Healthcare, which operates the Rainy River Health Centre, says they've contacted enough physicians to keep the hospital running until November 22nd 
and are now working to schedule locum doctors for the remainder of 2024. Rainy River Mayor Deb Ewald says it's encouraging to know they're covered in the short term. Because we were a little concerned that there, you know, it's kind of a short time frame to try and fill. So we're pretty happy. And it's it's kind of made people take a little breath of relief too, so which is good. Riverside officials say they're working with Ontario Health to find a permanent solution. Ewald hopes that will include finding doctors who want to make their homes in Rainy River. She says it's been roughly a decade since there was actually a doctor living there. Shoppers Drug Mart's Foundation for Women's Health is partnering with local women's shelters. The Giving Shelter campaign is meant to help women experiencing intimate partner violence gain access to supports. Beendigan provides services, including harm reduction and mental health programs. It's one of the shelters which will benefit from the partnership. Local shoppers associate owner Jocelyn Ritson and Beendigan family counselor Maya Munier says this campaign is a great way for women's shelters to increase their services. If we look at stats, we turned away about 989 women just last year alone, which shows that these women aren't having safe places to go because between us and Faye Peterson, those are the two options for a safe home for women fleeing violence. Um, so if there's 989 women being turned away and Faye Peterson is also full, that means we have more women at home with their abusers, which means they're at risk. Through this campaign, Giving Shelter, we've partnered with Bean Again to make care and shelter more accessible to women in Thunder Bay. I'd love to emphasize the fact that um, any contribution, no matter how small, can make a really big difference to the women in our community. The campaign runs until October 4th. Donations can be made at Shoppers Drug Marts throughout Thunder Bay or at the Shoppers Foundation website. A new art exhibit in Thunder Bay features the work of a dozen visually impaired artists. The Dream Weaver Project explores tactile art through weavings to show that anyone can be an artist. Joel Mendelssohn has more. I think it's a way to acknowledge that we're vulnerable as human beings. The Dream Weaver Project is celebrating the resiliency of people who are visually impaired by creating an art gallery comprised of tactile weavings. This way, the art can be interpreted by touch rather than just sight. But weaving is a very tactile um, artistic form, so it allows people who have low or no vision to be very much a part of the art. One of the things that's beautiful about this exhibit is there is a tactileness because they were made by people using their hands without using their sight. So uh, it's really nice to see people touch the actual weavings, which is kind of taboo if you go to most galleries. So I love that element. Carpic, along with the participants from the Canadian National Institute for Blind, chose the weaving project along with the materials used in the art. The materials that we chose together uh, represent uh, Indigenous past, present and future. So we've gone from using uh, uh, hide and birch bark to rickrack and wool to some electronic uh, elements in the weavings. We're using things like spruce root and birch bark and feathers and modern stuff. Well, mine, mine has seashells and we have beads and you name it. Along with the exhibit, visitors have the chance to try their hand at weaving and there are a couple braille learning stations to get familiar with the language. I think this is a way to doc democratize art that art is for everyone and being artful is for everyone. It's, it, we can all find joy and pleasure and learning by um, experiencing uh, the trajectory of making art. The exhibit is running until September 18th at the Colab Gallery and Art Centre in the Goods & Co. Market. Joel Mendelson, TBT News. The Thunder Bay Horticultural Society unveiled a new park bench this week commemorating their 100th anniversary. Stepping in for the mayor, City Councilor Dominic Pascalino cut the ribbon on the new bench, which sits just outside of Magnus Theatre. It's one of five locations around the city where the Horticultural Society volunteers tend to the grounds. Society President Vicki Bureau says she's grateful to the city and Magnus for making the installation possible. All the work that we do on doing the gardens and the care, planning, um, all the meetings, everything. It's all volunteer work. And this year from June to August, um, through various activities, our members put in uh, roughly 1,700 volunteer hours just for those three months. 
The Horticultural Society celebrated their centenary last year, and the bench is one of two that will be eventually installed to mark the anniversary. For the past 101 years, members have been gathering to share in the love of gardening. The group meets at the Oliver Road Community Center on the third Thursday of the month. And we're now joined by sports anchor Joel Mendelson. Joel, we go from one bench, and you know what? SIJHL players trying to get off the bench finally are as the season kicked off. Oh, very nice. Yes, the season does kick off tonight, and the Walleye play their home opener tomorrow. Sorry, actually tonight. They play again tomorrow, though, and we'll have the highlights from that tomorrow. But we'll have more on the Walleye when we come back from the break.